Hello, welcome to Wrestling Made Me Cry. Sending out my We Are Live tweet one second. Um, <laughs> I didn't have it queued up. Guys, listen, it's been a weekend for me. I'm a little bit sunburnt. I, my nephew turned five. It oh was a God. whole, I know he's getting so old. He had a Minecraft birthday party because he's like obsessed with Minecraft lately. That's really cute. I know. And he's just like, the best but it's been a weekend but listen we've had a lot of great wrestling this week and yeah. last week and everything in between uh my name is kylie this is collins and this is wrestling baby cry where we talk about the positive aspects of wrestling um all the fun things that happened not the mean things that happened and you know what there was a lot, a lot of those this week too but you know what <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think- know what you mean kylie at I- all I think that discourse has run its course. Um, Rob says, hello. Hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. I love Rob. We have to, listen, we have a whole list of people that we want to get on the show, and we just need to start cycling through them. I Like, last week, I don't know if any of you were here last week. That was chaos. We had, like, seven guests <laughs> on one episode. So, I mean, I was, like... Like, it felt like a fever dream. Like, what is happening? How many people were in here? And it was excellent. And it I loved it. It was a good time. I felt like it was kind of like a who's who in rest, <laughs> like great wrestling Twitter. Yes. <laughs> I, there's, I'm in a few group chats uh, for like live shows and things. So I just mm-hmm. said, hey, anybody want to come? And then people actually wanted to come. And I was very surprised. Oh, I love that. <laughs> but, but you know what? That was a good time. And we still have some WrestleMania things that we want to talk about because we didn't even get to everything. That's how jam-packed WrestleMania weekend was. It's crazy. It was crazy. Have you finished your taxes? I did. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I had like all, because I worked three jobs last year i think and i had all those w-2s and you have to input them all individually you can't see do all these here. different deductions it's mm-hmm. listen american tax system i the viewers are leaving they're like i did not sign up for tax <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a whole ordeal um but yes taxes are done i have i have actually received my return and everything it was oh before. yes that was quick I'm still yeah. waiting for my little return learned this uh this round i was like i didn't get like uh an i-99 for you know something i was supposed to and i was okay you know you got you got side gigs right Mm -hmm. i learned that the threshold is like twenty thousand dollars before you get like an i-9 in washington state or something that's crazy yeah, because I looked at the website of like where I have my side gigs going and I was like, and it had in the, you know, thing you may know. And it's mm-hmm. like on January 1st or whatever went into effect that, you know, content creators that don't make more than $20,000 won't be getting. So I was like, well, um, for my safety, <laughs> I screenshotted it. <laughs> Put it in a PTI, a PTF, BTF, no, PDF. I can't speak. You got, you got what the heck is wrong? <laughs> I eventually got there. Thanks. But yeah. So if the government is listening, please don't audit me because. Let's, let's say hi. Sorry. Let's say hi to some people. We have Maria. Maria. And, and Amanda. Amanda. And Eddie. Eddie. And Cyber, who's a new subscriber. Oh, it was meant to be. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Listen, we're just, we just got to jump right into it because mm-hmm. this is a jam packed episode. And I don't know if we're going to get to everything we had planned. <laughs> That's fine. There's a lot. So let's, let's start with WrestleMania. Let's cover like everything that we didn't get to talk about last week. And then we'll just go from there. So, Let's talk about Bailey because I want to talk about Bailey because I don't think we talked for a single second last week about Bailey and I felt really bad about it. Yeah, you should feel bad about it because mm. no, um, <laughs> that so as someone who invested time in the black and gold, you know, the NXT watching 
the four horsewomen, and then only three went up and Bailey stayed on NXT and like kind of watching her like get so far and then not, you know, and they get yeah. so far and then not. We saw that similarly with Becky and seeing it as like, this is clear written in the stars. It was Bailey's moment. And then the day before I was like, what if she doesn't get it? You psyched yourself out. I psyched myself out. I loved the Paramore music in the promo package, which made me a little sad that like they weren't performing live because, yeah. you know, my little, <laughs> my little emo heart goes, I want Paramore. Uh, but the match itself was super great. Loved. I loved this psychology of it all, you know, Bailey being the bigger, you know, wrestler and EO just trying to constantly ground her, mm -hmm. you know, opponent so that she could do her high flying moves. So I don't know. It was, it was fantastic. Definitely cried when she won. Definitely felt the, the moment definitely screamed. And the people I was watching it with, which were my in-laws were like, <laughs> after, after I screamed in the opening match with, Damien Priest catching it, cashing in, and then yes. there was just a lot of screaming and crying. You know, it was a lot of really great surprises. Mm -hmm. And another thing that makes me feel personally invested in Bailey is like during the pandemic, Bailey was one of the people who really like held down the fort. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, the Thunder Door, the Thunderdome was like kind of cheesy. Most people were not that into it. Um, the wrestling was also not that great. During the <laughs> it was, it was a lot, it, not just for WWE, for all of wrestling. I think mm -hmm. it was a hot spot. Um, and Bailey was what, even though when Bailey was injured during mm -hmm. the pandemic, oh she gosh. was really on commentary on the mic. She was really some a bright spot in a mm -hmm. time when a lot of people were in really, really rough spots and they were feeling very afraid and upset and all those kind of things. So I love that Bailey was rewarded for that mm -hmm. not just the pandemic but then also um being the leader of you know damage control and all these women who came in and some who came back to wwe mm -hmm. who had been released or had um their contracts had expired mm -hmm. and being a veteran presence and an identifiable face and so reliable um and i think that those are the people who should be champ and i think absolutely and I think Bailey has been that her entire time in WWE. So I was so mm -hmm. super excited. And Bailey's just also a good person. Just a really great friend, like going and supporting Mercedes everywhere and Trinity everywhere, popping up in these other promotions just to see her friends do well. Mm -hmm. um, just such an all around great person. And I just, of the four horsewomen, I think Bailey kind of gets pushed aside. Because yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte is such like a major presence, and Becky, mm -hmm. Becky has all of you know the man lore behind her and like the edginess. And Mercedes is such a personality that it's mm -hmm. she, Mercedes just stands out among all of them. If I'm being honest, in my mm -hmm. eye, and Bailey just kind of gets like, oh, she's just the fourth horsewoman, and that's really depressing to me. That's really sad. Yeah. So I don't think under the Triple H era that Bailey's been in that spot. I think Bailey's no. definitely. Triple H knows what he has in Bailey. Um, and I'm just excited. I'm really excited about the women's division in WWE. Cautiously excited. Um, because even though I don't watch or support WWE, you know, as consistently as other people, I do support the women there. Yeah. And because I think that I think that, that in, in itself is a act of um feminism. So I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Um, I I do have to say, watching Bailey go from basically like a super fan character, like the hugger was like that super fan, to going to um something bigger, something more than just an afterthought, the person who didn't get called up. And you're right, I remember the pandemic era, and it just yeah, it was rough. The Thunderdome, I think, was a good idea in theory. Yeah. But I think for a lot of people, it just kind of, it took away from it all. AEW, yeah. 
AEW yeah. did better with, you know, the, having the wrestlers ringside and that kind of thing. But even that, I feel like, um, <laughs> uh, sorry, Kate is in the chat. Um, this is, Kate really likes my hair today. And then uh, I knew it was uh, you, Kate. I was going to respond after I had my discussion about feminism to talk yeah. about to talk about my looks. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I think Bailey is just a wrestler that in 20 years time, we're going to look back and say, not like the women's revolution, WWE making its comeback, like all these things, none of it was possible without Bailey. Mm -hmm. And I feel like now in the moment, Bailey is not getting enough credit. And so, yeah. you know what? We just need to champion the cause. It's like TMDK and Bailey. That's that's the wrestling made me cry. Okay. <laughs> so what if we wear the TMDK um yellow windbreaker? I don't know, is it a windbreaker? Is it a raincoat? I don't know. Um, but then underneath we wear the new Bailey like tie-dye shirt. Yeah, we'll we'll put together the look. We'll put All it right. together. I'm into it. We just need pants, socks, and shoes. Yeah. Do any wrestlers have branded pants out there so someone in the chat will know besides the young bucks they used to have pants and i had the the young bucks pants so did i i was i was the young bucks for halloween and then on an episode of tad talk i was the young bucks again um and that costume is somewhere i have a closet behind me over here and there's just a bunch of costumes um the young bucks the fashion police um sting yeah a lot of them we have a super chat from Dan who said Bailey has been a reliable hand to WWE and you can see that she loves it. Definitely a legend. 100,000%. Um, I think Bailey's also, um, I think one of those people who, when she's not the star or she's not the focal point, she's happy to play the part and elevate someone else. Mm -hmm. And th that's when you reach those levels of stardom, that's a little bit difficult to find because people kind of like cling onto that fame that they had. Moxley's the same way. Moxley is always going to be solidly in the main event scene, but I think it's very clear that Mox is no problem elevating other people. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, thank way. you. So continuing with WrestleMania, let's talk about Cody because I don't think we talked about Cody at all. Adrenaline in my soul. It's the song something Cody, Cody wrote. wrote. <laughs> I don't so when people are singing it and I know that like lots of people say I mean hello every time that Adam Copeland Edge's music comes on I'm singing that at the top of my lungs because that's a good song I mean there was probably oh it, it was definitely from Russell Dream until the end of the year that Metalingus I was just playing on repeat yeah. So I know that there has to be people who've played Cody's song on repeat that much and that they know all the words. I'm just not one of them. Um, but I, there's just something about Cody Rhodes that is very likable. And it's been that way since his first run in WWE. Um, and seeing all the backstage stuff of like Cody getting the Rolex that his father sold. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Does that make you cry or not? Um, that match was also insane. I think it, it was very WrestleMania and it was perfect. And the fact that Roman and Cody went like they didn't just like wrestle mm -hmm. for five minutes and then that was it. They like wrestled for what a solid like 20 minutes. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not yeah. a numbers person. Um <laughs> <laughs> No, me, me either. I a match could be fifteen minutes or forty five minutes, and I could not tell you. I could not tell you. It was just a substantial actual match before the shenanigans. And mm -hmm. there's something about Cody Rhodes that makes you, even though that sometimes I love being a Cody Rhodes hater. Um, <laughs> there's just something about him that I want to cheer and I want to get behind him, and I I want to you know, put everything I can into cheering him on from behind my, <laughs> from yeah. behind my television, you know, like it, he can't hear me, but I feel like I'm part of it. So, oh, look, yeah. it was 34 minutes overall. 
So 20, 20 minutes for legit wrestling. Yeah. I, Cody is one of those wrestlers that uh, I think that I'll always look out for. Like mm -hmm. I don't always support simply because Cody leaving WWE and going on the independence and signing with ROH and working ROH in New Japan and like working with the elite and all that kind of stuff. I think that he was instrumental in building not only being the elite, not only, you know, the elite to the point where like they're winning the IWGP world championship and like mm -hmm. the, all that kind of stuff. I think Cody Rhodes, if Cody Rhodes doesn't leave WWE, AEW never happens. Mm. And I think that in itself is a testament. Like, I feel like that in itself shows that Cody Rhodes will always be not only a legend, but one of the people that I think young wrestlers should look up to. Mm -hmm. And I genuinely think that AEW now a lot of the things they're kind of working through, a lot of the problems they're working through, they're still relying on a lot of the ideas and the motivations that Cody introduced. Mm -hmm. um, and if you know me, you know I'm a big Young Bucks fan. I love Kenny Omega. I love all those things. I'm not, like, dogging them. I'm not <laughs> like, I'm not even better with Cody. Um, yeah. But I do think that Cody's mind for wrestling, not, listen, the Cody verse was the Cody verse. We don't talk about her. But I think Cody, when he thinks of the industry and like the mm -hmm. business things, I think Cody knows what's best for business. And so I will always support him simply because I love AEW and I love his legacy in ROH and his legacy in New Japan. And I love the stories that he did, especially his feud with Kenny Omega. Um, so even if I, I don't like Roman Reigns, I'm not that into the bloodline. Like if you watch Tag Talk, you know that I... It's not new information. If you follow me on Twitter. <laughs> um, but I genuinely root for Cody. And that is enough for me. And I think, I don't know where Cody goes from here. I don't know if it's The Rock. I don't know if it's Seth Rollins. I don't know if it's Roman again. I don't know if it's Tama Tonga. Like, I don't know. But what I do know is that I think Cody's at a point where he is just going to sustain like the high status simply because of the respect people have for him. Mm -hmm. And I think AEW fans, when they turned on Cody, it was never that much about not liking Cody as a person. It was like a dissatisfaction with the Cody verse and like the bad stories and all that kind of stuff. It was never about Cody. So I'm excited. I think, I think my favorite part about Cody Rhodes in AEW specifically, and it mm -hmm. speaks to who he is as a wrestler, always wanting to put over other people, is when he was the TNT champion and he was just having that open challenge week after week after week, having people that eventually did sign like Ricky Starks, like Eddie Kingston, but also having like War Horse come out, who is like an indie wrestling god in a sense, like <laughs> yeah. just seeing things that go, you know, one after the other, after the other, I'm not saying that he's going to be treated like that because I think WWE doesn't really treat their main title like that. But I think it would be really awesome to see Cody Rhodes kind of do like a open challenge, like maybe like a gauntlet something. Cause I know that WWE loves those gauntlet matches. Like, that would be really fun to do on, you know, whatever, a SmackDown or a, or a Raw before a pay-per-view. And yeah. I don't know. And I, always... think, I think oh. part of the reason why Cody's so good at that is he's, okay, yeah. Cody's not the most athletic wrestler. Like, I think we all yeah. can agree he's not Kenny Omega. He's not Will Ospreay. But I think what Cody is is a very emotional wrestler. Mm -hmm. And he's a very good storyteller emotionally. And mm -hmm. so I think the reason why the TNT um, open challenges and the, the Brody Lee feud and all that stuff works so well is because Cody tries his damnness to sell a story. Mm -hmm. uh, and he uses, like, his acting skills. And he, like, I genuinely believe that he's invested in everything that he does because he is. And Absolutely. so I think I can think of a lot of guys on the WWE roster who are not like that at all like they're mm -hmm. very like i hate this word but i can't think of another word they're very just like one note like, yeah and a lot of that is the wwe system then they're just brought up to be that way but i think mm -hmm. triple h is has shown that he's kind of trying to reverse that trend and develop individuality among wrestlers and 
move away from this weird system where everybody's on the same playing field unless you're a favorite like Roman yeah. Reigns. So I because <laughs> that's what Vince like sustained for so long. It was like here's yeah. WWE and then here's everybody who's in WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would love to see some of those guys work with Cody and see what he can pull out of them, if anything at all, like really test them in that way. Uh, and I think it would be a good time. Because because if you think about the TNT Open challenges, and I, the people that stand out to me are like Eddie and Ricky, and like the promos mm-hmm. they cut about like, this is my one shot, this is my opportunity, mm-hmm. I'm going to throw everything into it. There are a lot of guys who in WWE who could really, really benefit from that. And being mm-hmm. given that opportunity to be like in a position of desperation and fight and and like claw their way back up. So WWE should, I would say, WWE should probably do something along those lines. Whether they will or not, I don't know. They WWE likes to protect its world champions to almost like a detrimental extent. Yeah. Unless unless you're COVID people, <sighs> then <laughs> Uh, I mean, I the the wrestlers that come to mind, like LA Knight. L- yes. I went to the gas station, and the Slim Jim commercial with LA Knight is everywhere. Why? Like, he's at that caliber. Yeah. Um, I think that somebody had mentioned um, AJ. Um, mm-hmm. Thanks, Caden. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great feud, a great match. I mean, going back to, like, other great champions that are still there. Randy Orton getting involved would be fantastic. So there's, there's a lot to choose from uh, a lot to go through and I'm into it. Um, You know, I agree. I'm not a, I'm not a Cody fan to the point that I'm getting his tattoo, but I am a Cody fan to the fact that I will turn on WWE programming to watch Cody Rhodes. So yeah, I just have like a human respect for him. And also I respect, you know, the way he approaches wrestling because Cody Absolutely. is not that Cody's old, but he's old enough that he's, <laughs> he's in a position where he's most likely the most experienced in the ring and, you know, all those kind of things. But I, I think that he is exactly the kind of champion WWE needs right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited for Cody. Um Cyber says Cody's just the best and Mox too. Yes. Let's, let's talk let's talk about jump Mox. Right in. So <clears throat> New Japan had um a show, it was New Japan Windy City Riot. And at the show, John Moxley became they're calling him the global grand slam champion, the first to win WWE world title, AEW world title, and the New Japan um, IWGP world title. So that is like if you think about that, that's high key crazy. Right. <laughs> like, it's insane. Work your way up to the top of WWE, the top of AW twice, which, I mean, the, there were CM Punk shenanigans in there, and it was a whole thing. And then also um, IWGP, the New Japan title. And that's just like, Moxley is, even though he's at the top of his game, he's clearly very respected by people backstage in these promotions and talent in these promotions, all the kind of things. I don't think we put enough respect on his name. When people talk about the best of all time, they bring up, you know, Bret Hart. They bring up Shawn Michaels. They bring up Kenny Omega. And Moxley's, like, never in this conversation. And I feel like he should be. Because if he seems like every time a promotion is in a rough spot, they call in John Moxley. They are, right. <laughs> <laughs> so like, <clears throat> I was just showing my nephew um, – because he was asking who this Moxley person is, right? So I showed him I showed him how big of a deal he is. And he was like, mm, okay. And then I showed him, remember at Double or Nothing, when he came through the crowd, do, 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 came down, and the whole crowd is just, yeah. it, that's how I feel about Moxley all the time. Cause he is baby girl to me. You know what I mean? Like he's just, <laughs> he's okay. <laughs> you know, that chibi uh, sticker that's on the AW shop. Yes. I have it, but I haven't committed to where I want to put it because I, I, I feel like I need like eight of them because like, I want to put it on everything I own because Moxley is so baby and he's so like, 
I'm going to rip your head off, but also like, baby, I don't know. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Anyways. Like, you can tell that he loves what he's doing Mm -hmm. every second that he's there. And there's something so heartwarming about someone who, he portrays his character that's, you know, rough and like violent and bloody. And probably if you saw him in public, you'd be very, very scared. Mm Mm-hmm. But we know that he's not like that. One, because we, Renee Paquette, like everything she posts about him is like soft and sweet and kind. And then two, he's just like, every time he speaks about wrestling, it's so passionate. And it's so, it comes from a place where you could tell that this is everything to him. This is his life. Mm-hmm. Um, his promo then, after after winning. Yeah, he went away to get sober and that was the longest vacation he took. He probably <laughs> should have taken a longer <laughs> vacation i <I'm>, right <laughs> but i respect the fact that he went away to get sober because getting sober is like not easy at all anybody who's done it can tell you um and i respect it and i think that he for him he's just one of those people that goes all in on something mm-hmm. and really worked hard um to make it happen also a super chat from Caden who says barricade for mox's win this shit is real to me yeah uh, it was a big win and i think i think i had expected it i don't i don't know if you had thought that but <laughs> versus I, naito i mean naito's had yeah. the you know because naito won the g1 and then mm-hmm. uh things are blanking out of my brain so naito's almost held this belt for like what i don't know i'm gonna look because i didn't prepare myself for this um, but it makes me want to fantasy book everything because yeah. G1 is coming up in July. Yeah. And there are plenty of shows to go through. TZ and the Shota, like, shooter, you know, I just. Yeah. There's it's... so so many good things that are coming out of New Japan. And I also want to piggyback off of what you said, not to cut you off. Mm-hmm. But Moxley has always been the type of wrestler that goes, it's not about the money for me. Right? Mm-hmm. I have everything yeah. I need. I don't need a 10-year extension contract for WWE. He didn't need the money. He goes, I want to wrestle here. I want to wrestle here. I want to do this. And I want to do this. And that's what we want to see in wrestling. Some people just want to see the big superstars, the big ones that are making all the cash, getting all the brand deals, all the things. Moxley just wants to fight motherfuckers, you know? Like, he mm-hmm. just wants to bleed for this sport and in, in more ways than actual <clears throat> getting color. But, like, he bleeds for wrestling. And I think seeing him so passionate about wrestling makes me so passionate about wrestling because it's not about, like, the politics and things that were negative like specifically about this week moxley is one of the greats that is like i i just want to fight people and i want to i want to get all the like the accolades i want to make other people look great too and yeah he's just like he's he's really really invested in wrestling being cool i think that's what it comes down to uh, yeah. not that there's not a space for the goofy stuff in wrestling and I think even Moxley acknowledges that but he's one of the guys who's like I think wrestling is on a, a rebound it's coming back um, yeah. and I think Moxley is probably at the <laughs> forefront of that um, there's people talking about the G1 in the chat I don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I think is going to win the G1, but I think for New Japan as a whole, this G1 is like the most important one since 2016, maybe, simply because New Japan has no stars. They have Zack Sabre Jr., they have Naito, and that is about it. And so they really need (laughs) people to show up for the G1 and show out for the G1. Um, because Moxley's champion and he's going to be a reliable champion, but Moxley's an AEW guy and New Japan, their Mox can carry that role. He can do everything he needs to do for New Japan. And I fully expect him to, but it's New Japan is in a really, really rough spot. And so I think this G1 and the build up to the G1 is like so super important. Um, people Shota Umino 
is a great star in New Japan, a future star. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't think Shota wins the G1. I don't think he wins the G1. I I would be cool because I think Shota, like, he's, but I think Shota's still in a place where he is still very much like the minion of John Moxley. And so if Shota just, he's just not ready to be a G1 winner, a G1 finalist, maybe. Yeah. That would be cool. But Shota did beat um, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. He did beat Jack Perry, scapegoat Jack Perry, uh, with a new era for Jack Perry. <laughs> which, I've, which we're not going to talk about because I think it's yeah. contentious and I don't want people <clears throat> to be uh, upset. But listen, this G1, pull in some guys from AEW. Like, really, you can use, there's guys like Lance Archer in um, mm-hmm. AEW. There's well, guys in AEW, like you, you could Penta. Like all these guys, you could put them in the G1 and just have them put have great matches with all the young people in New Japan who are just not in a good spot. You never know what could come out of it. I mean, you have four blocks to fill, right? Yeah. And you have eight people for each block. There are plenty of people to put in those scenarios. I think having because Naito and Zack Saber Jr last year we're in the same block and I was torn like yeah I want I, I mean I'm very partial to Zack Sabre Jr. obviously yeah uh, <laughs> but like seeing like Okada you know was in this you know spot Sonata was in this spot like so seeing well Osper, like there are big holes that are going to be in the G1 that need to be filled. Um, and seeing people that have always been in the G1 for as long as I've been watching New Japan, it's kind of strange that. Yeah. Who who was going to win? Uh, yes, I have the jacket. I know, Kate. I know. And I'm not I, wearing it right now. I because... love that Kate is in here like somewhat anonymously. <laughs> <laughs> I do have the jacket. Uh honestly, like we have Shelton Benjamin, Josh oh Alexander. Gosh. Like there's a lot of people that New Japan could pull in for this um tournament. The mm-hmm. question is I think personally, New Japan, if Shelton Benjamin is a great shout. Like I think Shelton Benjamin would do great. I think that they really just can't pull in anybody who this is going to sound so bad. Like you can't pull in stars because if you pull in like Swerve, for example, not saying Swerve is going to be in the G1, just an example. Swerve is going to overtake the G1. Like yeah. that is going to take all the attention. But if you bring someone in who's like really well-respected, like Lance Archer, then your stars as new Japan get to shine. Because I think my worry is that we're kind of trending towards a spot where the new Japan AW relationship is so strong. Mm-hmm. It's becoming so central to Western perception of new Japan that mm-hmm. it's almost like it's Jack Perry It's the Jack Perry and John Moxley show for American fans. Mm-hmm. And not that new Japan needs to cater to American fans, but I think if they build their, the next Will Ospreay, the next Okada, the next Tanahashi, so on and so forth, they'll be in a better spot and it'll be more sustainable for their Western expansion with, you know, new Japan strong shout out TMDK. Um, and that part of their um, creative, but losing Osprey and Okada was such a big deal for them. Mm-hmm. So Moxley's there. He's reliable. He's going to carry the ship. The G1 is like the really big test for them. I mean, I, not even forbidden door. Cause that's a dream Matt show. Like we don't count her. She's just there for, right. the, for the most part. It's the G1. Are like, you who's going to come out of the G1 as in a better spot than they were before? Are you the type during the G1 to just casually catch up? Or do you wait and <laughs> watch it in the middle of the night? Or do you watch it the next day? I so like I have um the blocks and so I look at the matches, and if there's matches that I think are going to be 
important, I will stay up to watch those. But like mm-hmm. and anybody who watches a G1, like you know what's going to be a quick little match, what's going to be a fun comedy match, like mm-hmm. you know that. For and Yana, so yeah. I just kind of gauge it as I go. But this year, I really do think this year is going to be a lot of fun. So mm-hmm. I'm going to try to watch as many as I can live. I'm working over the summer, so I'm not sure like what my schedule will shape out to be. But I think that it's a super important turning point for New Japan and where mm-hmm. they have to make their own identity as a promotion again. Because mm-hmm. even, even when Okada was there, it was Kenny Omega left and they had, oh, well, you didn't even talk about Jay White leaving. Oh, yeah, and we didn't even talk about <laughs> well, Okada uh. was just such a major loss. But like, you remember when AW had formed and it was this weird spot where New Japan was like, okay, we have Jay White. We have Osprey, we have Okada, and we have Abushi. So they're just going to wrestle each other over and over and over and over and over again. And that's it. Mm-hmm. And now all those guys aren't there. And they they have Zack Sabre Jr. And they have Naito. But, like, they need to get them over the hump to the next spot. So I mean, they're shaping Gabe Kidd to be yeah. a legitimate threat. I mean, they're shaping uh, Ren uh, I Narita. Yeah. What's that? how i say it um i'm really bad at at learning things and i love watching new japan so i can learn more um he just got a big um win this last week uh with uh windy city riot but i i think that there are plenty of people who could fit into those positions i'm just anxious and waiting for it so this I missed this because I was so invested in New Japan talk. Kate says, <laughs> Rob was in here earlier and signed off as Rob. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I we know it's you, Kate. We recognize you. You know what's funny? You know those people that um, when texting first came out, that they would do like the, a text message and then they would do dash yes. their name. Every time I see people do that, I just think that's how mm-hmm. they're they've been just signing off everything since. 2020 20. um, especially like during the recession me yeah. and my sisters we had like one government phone because it was at a point in time i don't remember like what the program was called but it was to help people get phones so that they could apply for jobs or whatever and me and my sisters had one and we used to have to sign off because we would be texting our friends or whatever and mm-hmm. they'd be like they had to know it was us because they knew that we had all shared the phone and i remember we had one of those phones where like you had to hit the numbers multiple times to get yeah, letters. Yeah. And it was just, listen, that was a, that was the time to be live because you were so genuinely <laughs> excited to be texting that it didn't matter. But now people text me and sometimes I'm like, Oh, Collins texted me or Kate or what have you. And then sometimes I'm like, yeah, ignore. <laughs> um, I am I am a chronic um, ADHD uh, being on the spectrum type of person that if I open it and it says seen, it doesn't actually mean that it's seen. It just means that I wanted the Same. notification to go away. So Same. And every day I have to be like, okay, what did I swipe? And I have to open. And I have to open. <laughs> <sighs> uh, it'll be 2 a.m. And I'll be like, oh, no, Kylie texted me. Oh, no uh do i reply back is it it's like five is that weird okay hey i'm just seeing this sorry to reply Look. and that's why i think me and kate we have a system where we just don't text each other we only do voice memos <laughs> and i think that works out really well for us I... I think that that's the adhd hack i think we've yeah. like hacked the system but listen there's a ton of people in wrestling media and <clears throat> i don't people in the chat probably know this we all have ADHD. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Like every time I'm talking to someone um, new in wrestling media, I'm like, yeah, I have ADHD. So I'm sorry. I missed this message. Like I, it's, mm-hmm. it's an object permanence time disorder yeah. thing. And they're like, oh my God, me too. And <laughs> I don't know what it is. Something about wrestling, I think draws people with ADHD in. Yeah, it's true. Kaden says, yeah. It's true. And so, listen, if you have ADHD, just know this is your niche. Mm-hmm. We <laughs> all do. We do. I have it. <laughs> has it. So many people do. It's like the best. Maybe I'll do a poll. I'll do like, if you're investing, oh my God. We'll do like research on it. Uh, 
but anyway, back to wrestling. <laughs> I don't even remember. Oh, we were talking about the Moxley and the, the G1. G1 yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for the G1. I think it'll be I'm fun. Excited. Um, I'm excited for scapegoat Jack Perry too. I don't want to dwell on it too much because I think that there's a lot of like negative connotation coming into it. But I do think that this is the best Jack Perry has been in a long time. And I think that if they didn't do the scapegoat character and all the CM Punk adjacent stuff, it would have been the elephant in the room. So anytime you saw Jack Perry, like he'd be dipping and dodging and like dipping and dodging (laughs) around the, around this this looming elephant in the room. We saw it with the elite and you know, they, they, tease some CM Punk stuff, but for the most part, they didn't talk about CM Punk until this week, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, And it was like looming over them like a dark cloud. So Jack Perry being literally embodying the character, I -hmm. think is the best move for him because he doesn't have like the the longevity of Kenny Omega where he can just ignore that this happens. Mm -hmm. He's very much in, you know, the beginning of his career. So you can hate the Jack Perry character. Like people hated it people were saying it was a slap in the face to CM Punk blah 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 but like he cannot ignore it and they are really using it to get heat on Jack Perry and it's just and when he comes back to AW it's going to be so good he's going to he's going to slot like right into the hangman role in the elite Okada's in the Kenny Omega role Jack Perry in the hangman role and we're going to be set I'm excited (sighs) I just miss Kenny Omega I miss Kenny so much. <laughs> he streams on Twitch because he streams yeah. on Twitch on Fridays. If anybody didn't know that, yeah. And he he plays like Street Fighter and stuff, so not really games that I'm into. But I watch it anyway, and he's just so personable, and he tells stories about wrestling. Mm-hmm. It's just I just miss him. Like wrestling is not the same without Kenny Omega. I agree, absolutely. And there's not there's not much more I can add to that. It, it just makes me want to go through the um because I had I've had a subscription to New Japan for I don't know six years. <laughs> and now I just want to go back and watch um all the things. So all right. With that said, are we ready to jump into our next? Yes. I wanted to talk about this because I thought this was so super cool. So I think we had it. So backtrack, backtack, backtrack, backtrack. <laughs> AEW had last night collision and then uh, battle of the belt. Oh my God. Whatever, whatever number Athena? it was. Are we 10? talking about Athena? Yeah, we're talking about <laughs> Athena. Uh, and there was, there was matches, blah, blah, blah. But like the real takeaway, Athena back on AW TV. And me and Collins, like, uh, one of the episodes, like, we've done enough episodes now that I forget what each episode was. <laughs> <laughs> but we had talked about Athena being ROH champ coming to AWTV. Mm-hmm. And it happened. And they so heard Athena, our prayers. Uh, yeah, Athena is still ROH champ, still very much, like, embodying her ROH character and wrestling Red Velvet. And this match was a great match. I think Athena really came across... Um, almost vicious in a way, mm-hmm. like, and that's like that's when Athena's at her best because Athena um, kind of gets this. I don't know what the word is because a lot of Athena's um, outside of wrestling, she's into like Game of Thrones and like nerdy stuff. Mm-hmm. People don't expect yeah, that yeah. sort of like violence from Athena. So Athena came in to AWTV, and I assume her thought process was. Let's show out. I don't yeah. know if they show out. Um, Red Velvet was great as well. Red Velvet's comeback has been fun to watch for me. Yeah. Um, Athena and Aminata uh, was great, Kanan said. Did anyone else notice Athena yelling F off to Aminata? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that they're building that. They're building that. Aminata's going to take Athena's title. Absolutely. If she didn't get that TV title, the way yeah. that because not everybody watches Ring of Honor television. And if you uh, know me, you know that I do a Ring of Honor post show over at uh, OLE Podcast, our local establishment. Usually Kyle K. Sparks is on there, who is so much smarter than me. And I feel uh, to, 
it's an honor to even be on a show with him. But lately he's been doing other things. So I've had to kind of fill in the shoes and do a lot more homework, which is, I, I get a little bit exhausted because I've already worked <laughs> the whole day and I've done all the things. And I watch, because uh, Ring of Honor starts at 4 p.m. my time, which is like when I'm getting off work. So um, sometimes I have to watch it twice because, you know, whatever. But the fact is, Queen Omanada has had actual promo segments and actual like uh, video vignettes or whatever of her life. And they don't do those things. They don't put that time into her character and backstory unless that she's taking some title. And I thought maybe she might get the TV title and then it leads Billy to taking the title from Athena because she's hit her 50 now, what, 50... To 52 wins because mm -hmm. she won last week on Ring of Honor and she won um, yesterday. I bet all the belts. Sorry to spoil that for y'all. Uh, you should <laughs> still go watch it though. It's on it's on your DVRs probably uh, for Battle of the Belts. But I think that she hit that over 50 wins and I thought that Billy was going to take the title from her but they're building something else. So now we've kind of set up Queen Amanada to take that. And she's ready to fight every single week, just like Athena has been ready to mm -hmm. battle every single week. And you might not um, watch Ring of Honor, but basically the women own that show. So um, it's just like women of honor and sometimes men show up. So <laughs> sometimes men show up. Uh, the um, men, the men's champions seem to only show up on the pay-per-views and they're like, oh, okay. Do we need to, do we even need to, to do a, a <laughs> build up? No, no, <laughs> no, it's true. And like within that Athena has really been like the champion of ROH. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I don't know. So like Athena being on AEW TV I'm assuming that they're just slowly going to integrate Athena into something. Um, yeah. Hopefully, Athena versus Willow is on the horizon. Um, I would. I think it would be interesting uh, because Mercedes said that her first match is going to be double or nothing. It would be interesting if in the interim between Dynasty, which is next Sunday, and double or nothing, which is at the end of May, if... If Willow beats Julia Hart at Dynasty, which I'm assuming is going to happen, it's going to happen, yeah. Uh, to do Willow Athena, I think that would be a good time, uh, and I think that it would be a good reintroduction of Athena to the AW scene and a good first feud for Willow to really show off that she isn't just this happy-go-lucky, bubbly woman um, who just wants to be friends with Chris Statlander and is really sad <laughs> and, uh, to be to reach up to Athena and be in that violent space. We saw some of that in the street fight, uh, but mm -hmm. I think, I think Willow's potential. I don't think Willow has even reached her potential. Um, no, um, so, uh, I'm excited about it. Oh, yeah. Like Mark Briscoe will be on AWTV more than ROH. Mark Briscoe is wrestling at Di AW dynasty. Um, he's in that six man with, uh, Adam Copeland and Eddie against, uh, house of black. So, <sighs> Which is going to be fine. Um, it's going to be a fine match, but like, why would I tag with the person that I was just in a? I'd I'd rather with... have Adam Copeland versus Brody King in a TNT title match. Like, I'd rather have that, but it's fine. Beggars can't be choosers, and this card is stacked. So, and it, it's stacked with like really strong singles matches. Yeah. So, like, I'm not complaining because like Tony Storm is wrestling Thunder Rosa, which is going to be lights out <laughs> so good i mean with how many tony storm matches we've seen where they're tagging together as thunderstorm to like losing the title to thunder rosa going off television and now i just feel like there's a fire in thunder rosa that wasn't there when she returned that i'm yeah. Put the heat on it. Also, I have a question. After like watching Collision, so that segment with Thunder Rosa. So I feel like sometimes they don't do like the in like the in the ring 
interview type thing that they've been doing them on stage with the crowd behind. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Like the way that they're angling it. I mean, I'm guessing that it's like they're not facing a crowd. So maybe it's a little bit more intimate for them to have that conversation with the crowd reacting in the back. But what do you think about it? I've, I've been enjoying them only because I think that you get to see more of the vibe of the crowd. And I think mm -hmm. it makes, I think if you're there, obviously it's a little bit awkward to just like stare at the back of someone while they're on camera. <laughs> that's a little, scary. yeah. but I, I do think that I like that more than them being in the ring mm -hmm. um, and sort of just standing there in front of the hard cam and doing it mm -hmm. that way. I mm -hmm. think it's a little bit more, I guess immersive. Like I feel like I'm there, mm -hmm. but I, do you think that for the in-person crowd, it might be a little strange? Yeah, I agree. I, I, in the eight of shows I've been to, because the last one I went to was Revolution, they didn't do that there. So I've, I haven't had that experience. But yeah, and I do like it more than the backstage ones. I like that they're... I don't like the backstage ones at all. Yeah. I mean, backstage promos can be good. But like for me, what I prefer for a backstage promo is like a sit-down interview. I really yeah. like... Uh, JR did them a lot. Now um, Alex Marvez is doing them and Tony Schiavone. I like those a lot more than like a drive by, you know, Thunder Rosa come stand in front of this backdrop and tell us how you're going to beat Tony Storm. That's it's good. It's fine. It's but fine. I, I like to see the crowd. I like to be part of the experience. And I think that's what they're going for. Cause like UFC does some of those um, Bellator does some of those like promos in front of the crowd. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited to see like if they stick with it or if they keep going. Mm -hmm. But speaking of Dynasty, do you want me to just run down this card so you can feel the scope of how insane this is? I need, I need it, and okay. we should talk about it. So we have Will Osprey versus Brian Danielson, Okada versus Pac, Samoa Joe versus Swerve, uh, FTR versus the Young Bucks, Roger Strong versus Kyle O'Reilly. Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm, Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale, Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe versus House of Black. That is only AW could do. That's that only thing. only a this roster is insane. <laughs> <laughs> could be like my favorite match of the night. Mm -hmm. Any one of them. If okay, also two women's matches on the main card. Just throwing that out there. Shout out, shout out the women's division. We're I in a love good, that. Um, bullet, oh. Mike says, Bullet Club Gold versus the Acclaim should also be on the card. Uh, no. I, if we could like wrap that up, then I would like that to be on the card. Um, it should have been wrapped it, up. I am so sick. And this is going to sound so sad because I'm such a fan. I'm so sick of the Acclaimed. I'm just I, like over it. I don't know. Like, I, I understand that Max Caster is the more personality of the group or whatever. But the fact that, like, he's just trolling people online, he, he uses his platform to basically be what I would think is an 18-year-old boy, right? Someone who is, yes. like, stuck in the Blink-182, like, mm -hmm. you know... This yeah. is all comedy to me. I don't like. I don't like that. That's not for yeah. me. I am not the audience for that. Um, and I mean, you see, my scissor is right there. Like I liked the acclaimed when they were hot, and now right. they're just. And it's entirely for me. It's entirely Max Caster. <laughs> yeah, like, it's so weird that he's doing this on Twitter, and then. He has this Twitter character that he's the best wrestler alive, right? And he says all these, like, edgy things. Like, he's such a cool kid. And then that isn't translating to TV. Right. Like, Why they're just the acclaimed. Like, that, they're just the acclaimed. And the feud is basically between Billy Gunn and his sons. Like, that's the story. And so I don't know what is going on with that. I genuinely do not see the point. I think... Bullet Club Gold versus the Acclaimed should have been on a collision or something or, or dynamite. 
wrap it up, unify the titles with a bow. Bullet Club Gold goes, wrestles anyone. Anyone Any, else. O o Okada and the Young Bucks. Right. Anyone well, else, please. Anyone else. And then the Acclaimed, they go away. You can repackage them. You can, like, let, you know, fans grow to miss them. You could do an Anthony Bowen single run. You could do a whole lot with the Acclaimed. Like, they are very talented. Um, but for whatever reason we're in this spot. So I don't know. And I do love Bullet Club Gold. I I really was afraid of the guns being part of Bullet Club Gold. Like when it first came out, I was like, oh. Same. I was like, mm. but they've really like risen to the occasion. I've been really impressed with the guns. Um, and Jay White is always impressive. Like it down to their entrance yes. is where I start crying. Yes. <laughs> Like, I just want to know, like, they're so I, strong, like, as, I, like, as a presence. Right. Like, not just performers. It's like the, the way that they, they enter and they immediately take all of your attention. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, there yeah. aren't a lot of wrestlers that just by their entrance, I'm crying. Right. Like, <clears throat> like, <laughs> I loved Cody coming up through you know, the, the little elevator thing when he was in AEW, like seeing that paralleled in WrestleMania was just like mm -hmm. that, like those kind of entrances make me cry. But it's the fact that the moment that they come on, those lights go black, there is that spotlight and they just start doing the panoramic, yes. you know, whatever. And I do miss Juice Robinson being, you know, Mr. Honeycomb Crunch or whatever, whatever that cereal is, right? Honey 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 honeycombs yeah yeah honeycombs that just seeing that parallel of like the absolute feral behavior of juice robinson i i i love it and i can't wait till he returns but the guns are so solid they uh, they've quickly improved from when they were simply enhancement talents in my opinion um back during the um daily's place days um and jay white is always fantastic i i got my tits out for for jay white always so i love jay white i am such a big fan and i i was always someone who liked jay white uh but i always felt like he was kind of overshadowed by osprey in a lot of ways mm -hmm. because they were both like of the same generation and both like people who fans had assumed would be quote unquote, the next Kenny Omega, mm -hmm. or, you know, the, ne the next, what have you. And so they, I think they both were hurt by being in that position as beneath Kenny Omega. Yeah. Um, having to try to like reach that standard, but now they're both in AW and they're both like on two completely different paths, mm -hmm. but I think that they're both doing great things. And so I think once this acclaimed story is wrapped up and the acclaimed go off and do whatever, I think Bullet Club Gold is going to be in a really, really great spot. And I would love it if it eventually led to Jay White get finally wrestling Adam Cole. Finally. <sighs> Kenny Omega. Is he? He's not cleared, is he? Adam Cole? I don't think mm -hmm. so. I don't think, I don't think so yet. But he should be relatively soon. I mm -hmm. would um, I mean, granted, I don't know the nature of his injury and I'm not a doctor, but I would think so. <laughs> and the Jay White Adam Cole story has been building for ages, literal years. Yeah. Like before Jay White was even in AEW. And so I'm excited. I would love to, for that match to happen. Um, and there's so many other ones, like so many Jay White matches that would just knock it out of the park. Like mm -hmm. we the list is endless and he's been stuck in the acclaimed vortex for so long it's driving me crazy but dynasty i think to, to move on from jay white before we you know spiral expire yeah i was about to expire i don't know why i'm just gonna pass away here like this card is like you could have a card that was mid matches and then put one of these on there. And <laughs> well built. You're not wrong though. I mean, like, all of these matches, like all of these are main events to me. 
I mean, not to mention that the Young Bucks uh, versus FTR is going to be a freaking ladder match now. Oh, my goodness. I was, when it, that was the result of the tournament, mm -hmm. I was, I'm not going to lie, I was low-key disappointed. I was like, oh. I mean, I wanted it to be top flight as well. Like, I yes. feel like that would have been so great. I think that top flight did lose a little momentum when, um, when Dante went out with his ankle, it still, it's in the, it's still I in the back of my head, brain. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Sorry. You just almost saw me like gag for a second. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, so I think that that would have given them a little bit more momentum. And I went on a little rant about this this last week on ROH television, uh, because <laughs> I don't know if top flight is a duo or a trios at this point because action Andretti, is he not in top flight or do they have a different name? Action Andretti beat Chris Jericho and then disappeared. Uh, well, he's it's part not of that he flight. disappeared. It's that he's part of top flight and he's actually getting the pins on yeah. all of their wins in ROH, which is like, okay, we're supposed to be thinking that uh, action Andretti is like, maybe their big brother. Maybe like he's, I'm like, I'm filling in the gaps and I, I want to be told the story and they're not telling me the story. So I'm like, I, I guess this is what this is. Um, but I'm all for top flight. Like, give me more top flight. Like I loved their matches with, uh, uh Penta and Ray Phoenix. So why, why can't we keep going? You know? And the, the thing is like, you could have had this tag title match be private party and top flight, the next generation. Yeah. Because the Young Bucks FTR could have been built solo solely around Any... the footage. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we said we were going to talk. About Young Bucks could have shown the footage. FTR could have been like, hey, that's so super unnecessary. Like, this is wrestling, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, whatever purest <laughs> stuff that, the, you know, FTR is going to talk about. And you could have done a blood feud based on that. You don't need that story because it's a tag <laughs> tournament. The story's already there. You could yeah. have done private party top flight. Mm -hmm. but, like, I feel like it was an open, op like an open shot to um, build the next generation of tag stars. But um, Kate is back and talking about <laughs> TMDK uh, and who won the New Japan Strong uh, tag title. So, woo, woo, uh, woo. if you really want to watch that match. Um, just go over to the New Japan um, little subscription. It is a little bit difficult um, in some regard because it, um, unless you have the translation um, already set up in your browser, like I do, um, you have to figure out <laughs> how to navigate the website in Japanese. But I think it's up there. I think I got like a little notification. You can go watch it. Um, that was a great match. A great tag team match. And here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. We did it. I think I think Michael Mikey knew that we were watching him because there were moments where he like <laughs> would look over his shoulder and I'm like, you know the, you know the jacket squad is watching you. The team right? DK squad is growing daily. <laughs> they constantly quote tweeting, like, yeah, you can join. Yeah, yeah. I have is someone keeping a roster? I'm having <laughs> okay. trouble keeping up. I think Kate should because Kate's the one who's bullying everyone into getting the jacket. And when I say bully, I don't mean it in a negative connotation. I think that there is healthy bullying. Um and this is a healthy bullying. We need an Excel spreadsheet, Kate. Um Thank we you are for coming back in the chat because now I know you're here and we can tell you to do it. We are inspiring a community, so we are we are. Mm -hmm. But Team DK, shout out. And okay. I also think I also think Team DK is um and I I don't want to use the word pillar because it's like such a, a thing now. It's like a, a mm -hmm. pillar trademark, like it's its own thing. But they're like a centerpiece for New Japan's future moving forward. Okay, but like whoever wins the uh tournament, the ladder match versus Team DK at Forbidden Door. Tony Khan, take notes. Take notes, Tony. Hello. <laughs> I, I I would fly out to 
Long Island. Well, technically, I'd be flying out to Newark because it's the only airport that I'll go to. <sighs> but it's, the airports up there are rough. <laughs> not gonna lie people have tried to convince okay i lived i lived in new jersey for 10 years it's basically like where i grew up so when people try to convince me that laguardia because you have three main ones right you have laguardia you have jfk and you have newark mm-hmm. newark is in new jersey so it's it's not like as like accessible for some people it kind of would be out of the way if you're trying to go to Queens, you know, that why mm-hmm. wouldn't you just go b- to LaGuardia? But um LaGuardia is trash. <laughs> really? Every time my flight was delayed when I would be visiting, you know, my family out here in Washington, always delayed. Whenever I would fly to my, you know, my grandma's in Florida, always delayed. So like and I've only flown out of JFK to do international flights because JFK is just so scary to me. <laughs> and I've flown into Newark many times. Yeah. Um, because I've gone to a lot of AW shows in Newark. Yeah. Um, I think like a couple, I don't, I don't even remember what shows. One was a full gear, I think at some point. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, and the air, okay, it's not like, the nicest airport but most airports no. are not nice like anybody who travels a lot you know most airports suck but newark i think is the less stressful like you i can't know you can get out so yeah simply. i know where i'm going like it's yeah. so simple and mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of like atlanta's a really big airport mm-hmm. but they've done a lot to you know streamline how to get around that airport it's like so super easy laguardia no, never flown into JFK, so I can't say anything about JFK. But Newark Airport, underrated, shout out. Not the nicest. Never going to win any awards for beauty. No. But it's like, it's so it's smaller. It's easy. To, like, there's signs that tell you where to go, and they're not in the wrong place. Like, it's good. I'm, I'm not the type of, like, some people like going to the airport to, like, experience the airport, right? Yeah. I don't know who those people are because I'm not one of them. The last thing I want to do is be around people, uh, <laughs> especially when I don't know their motives. Right. So I go to the airport and the last thing I want to do is spend any more time than I need to. So I'm going in and I want to go out. I want to get there safely and I want to get there on time because if you, if you as so interrupt, like, and make me have to be flexible, I have to practice my coping skills because for someone who's like neurodivergent, like I just think unending doom. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind airports. So like if it's the Tampa airport, which is the airport I normally fly out of, Mm -hmm. love that airport. Miami airport and Orlando airport, garbage. Tampa, (laughs) like by far. Uh Uh, I don't mind being in the airport. I love being on airplanes. Something about like the hum of the engine and like the sound of like the air, I just fall asleep every time. I'll be in like the middle seat, just like knocked out. I'm so glad for you. <laughs> I feel like I am like being rocked to sleep. It's like the white noise. Like, I don't, is anybody else like this? Maybe some of the chat knows that they're like this. But there's been a couple times where like I'm just like completely passed out. And I wake up with the landing, like the jolt of the landing. It's, I it's think my, that it's my secret talent. Planes are fun because you kind of learn who people are without like instant technology. Right. I know yes. that more and more flame planes, flames. Wow. More and more planes have Wi-Fi, but it's, it's that regard of like relying on their entertainment or you have to make your own entertainment. And I, I love traveling with people who like playing like little card games. So yeah. I'll bring like Uno or I'll bring like, um, we have this game called Slam Witch where oh, we're not talking about wrestling anymore. So Slam no, Witch okay. is like, you're basically trying to make a stacked sandwich. So somebody, um, it 
they're face down. So you don't know what's happening, right? You can't yeah. like plan out the sandwich, but you're just putting toppings, 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 toppings. And the moment someone has a card that they put on top, that is the end of the bread, you have to slap it. And then you get those cards. And the goal is to get all the cards. I don't think I've ever played this, but now I'm going to, I'm going to send you it. I'm going to send you it and you, we have to play it. So, okay, we will. Uh, <laughs> some people in the chat talking about Jamie Hader. I miss oh Jamie gosh. Hader. Hader's been gone for an entire year. Yeah. Well, to be fair, Jamie Hader's injury was like pretty serious. Yeah. I think, didn't they, there was an update on Fightful not, not long ago that they thought it was more like it, less severe than it was, which is kind of backtracked a lot of the, yeah progress so um i think any everybody wants jamie hater back especially mm -hmm. with like how good the women's division is now like you introduce jamie hater back into the mix and there's so many directions to go i don't know which one i like more mm -hmm. like jamie versus mercedes banger jamie versus athena jamie versus tony thunder rosa diana perrazzo julia hart willow nightingale chris statlander like there's mm -hmm. so many ways to go and like it's such a good time to like women's wrestling yeah uh, Cyber says I miss Biggie too. Yeah. Well, Biggie did update his um I don't know. You're gonna have to go look at his tweaks. I don't want to misspeak on his, you know, medical situation, but he's not cleared to come back. But like yeah, he's, he's content with, you know, he may never be cleared again, but like he's content with being alive. And like, you know, I think he's healing emotionally from, you know, such a traumatic thing that happened to him. Um, but again, I don't want to speak on his medical stuff because I don't want to say it wrong and misspeak. So go to his Twitter and, you know, figure it out yourself. But yeah, we all miss Big E. Um, the New Day was for a long time my favorite thing in WWE. A, mm -hmm. big, a big part of that. So shout out Big E. Uh, but I, where were we going? <laughs> where were we going with this? Um, I don't remember, but AW Dynasty, it's going to be a banger. Uh, Shout out to everyone going to St. Louis. That's where it is. I think so. Right? Let me, let me go ahead and take a look. It is in St. Louis, Missouri. Heck yeah. How do you say that? Shai, Shai Fez? Shai, Shai somebody Fez? tell me. What? I, I don't know. How do you... Anybody from Missouri here? Let me know. Shai... Uh, C H A I F E T Z. Chai Fetz. Chai Fetz. Chai Fetz. Chai Fetz. That's how. Oh, that's how the internet says to say it. Chai Fetz. Interesting. I don't have know what that is, but <laughs> have you ever been to to St. Louis? I have not. Me I um, my sister and I were going to go um, back when I think it was a full gear was going to be there but then they moved it because the ufc show and went to minneapolis we mm -hmm. were going to go there because we have family that lives there and it was you know mm -hmm. going to be an easy trip but they moved it because of the ufc so we didn't get to go um, i remember all of that yeah, speaking that of that day <laughs> my gosh uh speaking of which i'm debating whether or not we want to go to double or nothing Double or nothing is a fun time because of Vegas. Right. Uh, and it's like AW fans do take over the city. Like, and any pay per view you go to, like AW fans, they like, if you want to do something touristy, you'll find AW fans. Like, they, yeah. <laughs> they make that thing. Um, but like, I went, did I go last year or did I go the year before? I don't remember. Uh, I did one to a double or nothing in uh, Jacksonville, and then maybe mm -hmm. the next. I don't remember. It doesn't that timing doesn't matter? But it's a lot of fun. It really is, and the, the arena is really nice. So that's definitely a benefit. All right, um, I gotta I gotta make my decision here. I mean, we did just get like some really cool. Um, instead of instead of asking for gifts for a wedding, we asked for like money for a actual um, honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And we do want to go to Japan eventually, but I feel like with my dogs, I don't think I could do it. Like, I don't think I could go for it because we're not just going to go for a couple days. You're going to go for a long like time, two yeah. weeks, right? And I don't know if I could. 
Please Vegas the dogs. They're oh, okay. um there's a lot of like really gimmicky tourist stuff in Vegas, but like there's a lot that. of really good. Yeah, I love the gimmicky tourist stuff. <laughs> Like a, a Hollywood Cars Museum that's so gimmicky and touristy, but it's such a good time. Um, there's the M and M store. There's obviously casinos, but I don't I don't gamble. Um, mm -hmm. There's like a lot of really great just outside of Vegas. A lot of really great nature walks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. So we'll see. It, it would be a good trip. Um, the other AEW shows because AEW really released like their whole pay per view. Schedule. Yes, they're so schedule. weird for AW, but I'm I'm glad that they did that. Mm -hmm. uh, they're returning to a lot of the same towns again. Can I just go on a little rant? Okay, yeah. so I I don't know what's going on with AW, but specifically in the Washington State area, I just want to remind everyone that Seattle proper is very different than. SeaTac Airport, which is like just like any other city, which is like 20 to 30 minutes outside the city. So when you have these shows, right, there is a show that's going to be in Washington State in May for Dynamite. It's in Everett. You look at a map and you go, oh, that's just like 30 to 40 minutes outside of the city. That happens like Hoffman Estates, 30, 40 minutes outside of Chicago. That That's not the issue. It's the fact that Washington State sucks at public transportation. There are so many other cities that have outstanding public transportation. I mean, every time that people have shows in the New York City metro area, I'm like, that's that's like the Mecca, right? Of all like public transportation. And the United States really needs to like figure their ish out. But in order to go from Seattle proper to Everett, if you do not have a car, you have to transfer to a, an adjacent city because that's where the transfer center is. Then you have to catch another bus. There's no trains. There's no nothing that goes up that far. So your SOL, if you're trying to do that, especially on a weekend, because they go on weekend things, right? Wrestle Dream is going to be in Tacoma. There is no bus line from Seattle to Tacoma on the weekends, mm -hmm. to my knowledge from people that I know. So people that I usually go to shows with don't have vehicles or don't have reliable transportation to Tacoma. Tacoma is 40 minutes south. Mm -hmm. It is closer to Aberdeen, Washington. It is the hometown of Swerve, but it is not Seattle. And a lot of fans, a lot of wrestling fans live in the Seattle area cannot go to these shows that are outside of the city of Seattle because there's no weekend transportation. And that sucks because our city really focuses on sports. They don't really focus on like other venues, especially outside of the city. So sure. If you live in Seattle, you could easily go to the football stadium or the baseball stadium or figure out your way to climate pledge, which is where like the Seattle storm, uh, the women's basketball team plays. There are concerts there. It's easy to do that when you live in the city, but for some reason, these do, they're doing these shows one in Everett, which is North 30 to 40 minutes. And one is South 40 to 50 minutes. And there's always construction and there's always a bunch of cars mm -hmm. that I, I get people's anger when it's, <laughs> aw going oh we're live in chicago but it's hoffman estates right yeah there's no public transportation the uber and all of those are surge pricing it just sucks and i wish that we didn't have a society that relied on cars as the transportation so when when i made that comment of like why tacoma um tacoma is not uh the best place to be late night because they have a higher crime rate I'm sure, uh, than Seattle. Like, like it just kind of sucks altogether. Um, because at least with Seattle, you get like the pretty, you know, Seattle yeah. skyline, you get the, the space mm -hmm. needle in the background, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kind of annoyed. And I know that there are other venues that are on this list that aren't like the main city proper. They're kind mm -hmm. of outside. And I think that 
AW is doing something to try to fill up smaller venues. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, I, and I, it might've been Joel Pearl. I can't remember. Someone talked about this, like AEW constantly doing like, suburb towns of big yeah. and stuff like that and i guess maybe it's because business wise it's probably cheaper like i don't really know but like if you've ever been to an aw pay-per-view know that it's not for the most part most of the crowd it's not just people who live there like people yeah. travel for aw pay-per-views people travel mm -hmm. like a long way for aw pay-per-views uh and so it's difficult to justify a trip for an AW pay-per-view if it's in a city that has nothing there. Like, yeah. like that's, that was the big thing about Hoffman Estates, and I'm so which I'm glad they moved it to like actual Chicago. Yeah, like, Hoffman Estates is nothing. There's some hotels for people who are staying in Chicago, like yeah. in Chicago, and there's like chain restaurants and like a movie theater and just some stuff like that. There's nothing that you can do there, and so it's hard to justify the trip for all out if you go and you stay in Hoffman Estates and the only thing you're doing is that show because it's too much money to get into Chicago. Cause like there's buses, um, but Hoffman Estates and like some of the other suburbs, like it's, it's touch and go, whether it's actually going yeah. to work or not. So I don't know, but I do think that um, I might be able to make full gear um in november fingers crossed because that's at new in newark yeah yeah that's in newark um because i won't be able to make forbidden door because i am working uh, and then can't do double or nothing <sighs> all in is no because i cannot travel because it's, it's, <laughs> it's the start of like a new semester <laughs> and so i can't just be like, yeah, um, I need to take the first week off because <laughs> yeah, I know that like my students need me, but like I have to take off so that I can go watch wrestling. Uh, yeah, geez. Really um, um, yeah, AW Dynasty, like I'm fine with AW adding more um shows and mm -hmm. especially I hate the term like B level, B level, B level, but like secondary um pay-per-views between the big ones. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. Um and I think Dynasty is, they're really promoting it as like, this is a new era of AEW. We're establishing our dynasty. We're doing all these sort of things. And like talent are saying it explicitly. So I'm excited about it. I think it'll be good. Um, we'll talk more about it next week, uh, probably, because we'll have like the fully solidified card and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, do you have any closing thoughts? There's a lot of cool shit going on in wrestling. Um, I think that you should watch what you want to watch and you shouldn't uh, pay attention to, I don't know, accounts that all they do is bash wrestling or bash other content creators. I think that uh, we we need to, I, I'm speaking to myself, I need to focus more on like, okay, this is, this is how I want to spend my time. This is how I should spend my time because your time is precious. Your money is precious. Your sanity is precious. So just, just take care of yourself, drink water and watch the wrestling and content that you want to watch. Like me, I didn't want to watch any wrestling really after Wednesday. I said, no, I don't want to do that. You know what I did? I watched Vanderpump Rules because I wanted some drama. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Watch the content you want to watch, and you don't always have to watch wrestling. I sign off on that. I, <laughs> um, yeah, I when I watch wrestling, I watch it because I want to, and I want to be mm -hmm. there to see it. Um, uh, I don't watch wrestling that I know is not going to interest me, and it's remarkable what that does for your love of wrestling and your mental health. So many people, like, not even just wrestling fans like they just hate watch wrestling i don't get and, it like they never like anything and they're just so annoying and like bitter about everything that they see so i'm like go, go watch something else I don't like get it. you know what it's there's no one like sitting here saying yeah you need to watch wrestling or else <laughs> <laughs> 
What do you think is going to happen? Oh, you skipped AEW a week. You skipped WWE. You don't watch New Japan. Oh, the boogeyman's going to get you. Like, no. Let's just be, like, responsible with our wrestling viewership and also responsible with the way that we talk to each other on Twitter. Because some of you this week were a little crazy. Um, it was, like, the vitriol on Twitter about Absolutely. about 30 seconds of backstage security camera footage or like someone's entrance was absurd like the way that you speak to people mm -hmm. is a reflection of like the way that you feel about yourself and so like i wish nothing but health and wellness and peace for everybody mm -hmm. but we need to start being more responsible with the way that we speak to each other that's all absolutely I'm absolutely um, do you have anything to plug before we wrap up Oh, you can just watch uh, this channel every Sunday uh, where you'll find our beautiful faces uh, crying about wrestling. And then you can find me Thursdays over at the OLE podcast. You can always find that in my link tree on my social medias uh, of how to watch that every Thursday at, for me, 7.15 Pacific Standard Time. But it is 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. I don't know. Is EST, PST? I don't know. I don't know. Did I say it right? I don't know. <laughs> My brain is kind of spaghetti right now. Um, just remember to drink water, guys. Because there is a post-WrestleMania weekend depression that happens. And we're going into more and more pay-per-views and all the things. Just treat your, your body right. If your body is telling you to go to sleep and not watch the wrestling, just do that. Yes. I wrestling just watching wrestling does not need to be a stressful endeavor. Absolutely. And there are people in wrestling media, it has to be for them because they they grind hard for Kenny work. Shout out Jeremy Lambert. But like you don't have to do that. Yeah. Like so many people they're like oh they like showed their itinerary for the weekend. And I'm just like what are you doing? That's a lot. There's so much wrestling every week. It's honestly reaching kind of insane love wrestling that is like worth watching. I should say, mm -hmm. um, but I love that wrestling is thriving right now. I guess like that is my ultimate final thought. I love that wrestling's in a really good spot and like people are coming back to watch wrestling, but you can follow me on Twitter at Kylie wrestling. Uh, ap apparently I'm my Twitter gimmick is that I'm a hater, but I don't think I'm a hater. I think I'm no. just, I'm just, I'm just me. Um, I'm I'm not mean, unless you're mean to me. Then I will be mean to you, or Listen. my friends, or my friends will be will be mean to you because sometimes they catch, <laughs> and that, that that is crazy. Sometimes I'll come back to my mentions and it's like da, 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 all my friends just. Uh, that's me. I'm yeah, in there. Know? So Being sometimes mean. it's Kate. Sometimes it's Sean. Sometimes it's Caden. Sometimes it's Mike. It's just da 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 da. And, you know, I, I love it. I love it. Um, and uh. I don't remember where. Oh, plugs. This is wrestling made me cry. <laughs> talk about the, the positive aspects of wrestling. Uh, you start selling the hater merch. It would make so much money. Uh, I don't want to brand myself as a hater, though, Kaden. Like that. I just, listen, I am a proud hater. And when something is bad, I will say that it's bad. Um, oh, this reminds me. Kate says, Kylan here, Team DK Orange, we love to see it. It's a Camp half blood shirt. I wanted to wear it in honor of Adam Copeland, the star of Camp half of the Percy Jackson show. He plays Aries. Um, I wore this specifically for that reason and then totally forgot because I wanted to tell <laughs> Collins. <laughs> I, I love it. Until see, this moment, yeah, Camp half blood I'm, um, just, I'm just wearing my Mel Coleman shirt, so. I love Mel Coleman. Mel, I love Mel Coleman. If you haven't seen the Percy Jackson show, I suggest everyone watch it. Adam okay. Coleman is really great in it. Fine. Um, he has I've only like watched it four times. <laughs> he, he has like a minor role. He plays Aries, but like he's really good as um, uh, Aries. Anyway, back to the plug. We talk about the positive aspects of wrestling. We're live every Sunday at noon Eastern. Um, we'll be live next week. Um, Probably going to talk about AW Dynasty because I'm excited for the card. Probably going to yeah. talk about some other cool stuff. Probably going to talk about some nonsense. Um, we can do predictions next week if we want to. Yeah, if you would like to see that, um, let us know. I think that would be fun. Uh, this is Fightful Overbooked. There's a lot of great shows here on Fightful Overbooked, including co-existing with Rob and Maggie. Uh, 
which I always shout them out because for whatever reason, I they're so underrated. So go Absolutely. watch Coexisting. And there's some other stuff like Jeremy. Jeremy does some shows, but th- listen, wrestling made me cry in Coexisting, and then you got yourself covered. Um, no, I don't mean that. I instantly felt bad. I love Jeremy. Yeah, so, you should feel bad. Um, they do In the Weeds. It's a really great show. Uh, there's FMC. There's some. Uh, there's like so many shows. So just like go to the playlists and then just scroll until you find something that you want to see. But if I've overbooked, subscribe, um, like this video. Yeah. Like, share, time. subscribe. Yeah. Like, Send share. it to a friend. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, let us know about the predictions. because Sometimes predictions, like it's touch and go. People want to hear about your predictions, but they also, they want to be involved. So like, let us know, like if we did an AW Dynasty predictions episode, what would you want that to look like for you? Um, all that being said, we'll see you next week, noon, Sunday, exactly almost a week from now. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. this, listen, this was a long episode. We're, we're like, we're not our people. No. Most shows, they aim for an hour, but well, we can't do that, I don't think. I don't think that's in the cards for us. I, I like that we ramp a little bit. It makes it yeah. more personable. And I love getting to know you more, Kylie. Yes. So. I love getting to know everybody in our chat. Um, especially yes. Kate, who was here as Fightful the whole time. <laughs> not as Kate. Fightful wrestling with Sean Ross Sapp. Yeah. Like, is this Kate? Oh, I don't know. It's Fightful. Um, but Kate has a YouTube. So go check out Kate's YouTube as well. Um, I... I I don't have the link to it, but go find it somewhere. Anyway. We'll find it. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.